Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress, my channel where I talk all about sewing, knitting, crochet and making. Mostly all about sewing and making a handmade wardrobe. Thank you so much for joining me again today if you're a regular viewer and if you are new, welcome to my channel. So I recently shared a video talking all about everything that I made in 2022 and at the end of that video I included 10, I think, of my favourite makes of last year. I thought it might be fun and actually quite interesting to go back through what I'd made last year and think about what my least favourite makes were as well and why that might have been. And if I am going to be making those patterns again, what I could do in the future to change them or tweak them to make them a little bit more better and a little bit more wearable for me. So I have to say, um, I was in the nice position when I came to do this video and to plan for it, of going through all of my mates and actually having trouble finding anything that I really thought, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> and um, in previous years, that hasn't been the case. And I think, that's a really good sign to me actually that I am moving forward and making more things that I enjoy wearing, that I know are the right colours for me and I know are the right fabrics for me too. That's not to say that I haven't had any mistakes or any disasters or anything along the way but on the whole I was pretty pleased with everything that I'd made. However, <laughs> I did manage to find five things that I know when I look at I kind of think oh, I don't really fancy wearing that or I'm not quite happy with how that's turned out and that's what I thought I would share with you today. I always like to go back through the year and just think about what's worked and what hasn't worked because I think that's really helpful to know going forward when I'm planning makes for this year. I don't want to be wasteful, I don't want to make things that I'm not going to enjoy wearing and that I'm not going to like. So yeah, I am getting more and more into this whole sort of reflection thing <laughs> and trying to be a little bit more mindful about my sewing and what I'm making and what I'm bringing into my life and my home and my wardrobe. So firstly, I'll talk about something that I made towards the end of last year, and that is a version of this pattern, which is the Jarrah Sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen. So if you are a regular to my channel, you'll know how much I love this pattern. I've made it so many times and lots of different versions as well. So I think I've actually tried every single version of this pattern now, and I do really love it. It's such a versatile sweatshirt pattern. There are quite a few different options that you can make to it. So you can make a funnel neck version, a tie waist version, um, a kind of um, dipped high-low hem version, or you can make the standard sweatshirt pattern with a hem band, a neck band and cuffs. And this version is actually the version that I've made the most. And I really do love this pattern. It comes together so quickly and it's such a nice, relaxed, sort of oversized, cropped fit and I feel as though it fits me really nicely so this is one of my favourite patterns. So towards the end of last year I decided to make a rather obvious hack <laughs> and I couldn't work out why I hadn't done it before really. I wanted to make a lengthened version of the Jarrah sweatshirt so just the standard version with the hemband, neckband and cuffs and I wanted to lengthen it down to make a sweatshirt dress. So I'll put in an image of how the sweatshirt turned out and I do actually have it with me today to show you. So here's my Jarrah sweatshirt. You may remember me sharing this with you when I made it. Um, so, so, so this one, um, yeah, I'm not completely 100% happy with this version. So what I did really to lengthen the sweatshirt pattern was grab a ready to wear long sweatshirt that I already had, um, measure the length and lengthen the Jarrah pattern straight down to make it more tunic length rather than cropped sweatshirt length. And in theory, that all worked fine. But when it came to actually sewing up this version of that um, hacked pattern, I made a bit of a mess of it. And what happened was um, I overlocked in the neck band, being rather confident. I've made this pattern so many times before and I was sure that it all would fit in okay and everything. So I overlocked the neck band straight in and realized when I'd done it that I'd put it in back to front. <laughs> So I then needed to unpick the whole neckline and reinsert the neckband. And that unfortunately has made the neckline stretch out rather. So even though it's one of those things that isn't necessarily noticeable when I'm wearing it because mostly I wear my hair down and it probably covers it anyway, the neckband does stick up a little bit 
so it doesn't sit flush to my neck it kind of sits up around the sides and it feels a little bit funny so whenever I wear this now I just feel as though it's not quite right which is a real shame and the other thing that happened with this one is I don't know if you'll see on camera but I was cooking in it and ended up splashing something on the front and it has a big sort of greasy stain here <laughs> So I think this one is going to be relegated to wearing at home kind of um, clothing. <laughs> something that I can just put on if I'm doing yoga in the morning or if I'm just doing housework or something. But I'm definitely going to try and make that length in Jarrah again because in theory it's a great hack to do and it's something that I wear a lot, sort of long sweatshirts and leggings and things if I'm ever just having a day at home. Um, that's probably what I'll put on because it's such a nice cozy comfy wear but you kind of feel as though you're put together enough to see people if anyone turns up or, or answer the door to the postman or whatever <laughs> so yeah I am going to try that one again but this particular version I'm just not 100% happy with. The next make or the next two makes which are not my favourite of last year are two swimwear makes. So last year in 2022 I had my first foray into swimwear making which was great and it was something that I never thought I would do. I always said that I would never make swimwear or underwear or jeans <laughs> but um, we had a holiday last year and I, in looking for a swimsuit on the high street, I just hate shopping for swimwear. I can never find anything that I like um, or that fits in the way that I want it to fit. So I, in the end, thought this is really silly. I should just try and make something myself that I know that I'll enjoy wearing. So I decided to go for this pattern, which is the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe swimsuit pattern. So there are a few different versions of this pattern that you can sew. You can make a one piece swimsuit, you can have it sort of plain, or you can have it with a tie back, which is a really nice detail. Or you can make a two piece swimsuit, one with a very high waisted bottoms and a kind of sportswear top, or one with um, a lower waist and high leg bottoms and a bit of a shorter top. So I decided to go for this version, which is version D, which is the high-waisted pants and the sportswear top. And um, yeah, I had a go at making my first uh, swimwear set. So I'll put in an image of how my first set turned out. And I also have it here to show you. So making swimwear itself wasn't half as scary as I thought it might be. I definitely wouldn't say that it's my favourite thing to make. It doesn't feel very nice to me inserting all that elastic and stretching things and <laughs> yeah it doesn't feel like a sort of an enjoyable so at least not to me anyway it definitely wouldn't be my favorite or my choice of thing to make um but it's one of those things that's kind of necessary if like me you hate to buy shop bought swimwear so i made this set and then later on in the year i made another set which is exactly the same in this really lovely gingham swimwear fabric which I got from Tilling the Buttons actually when they released their swimwear pattern. So yeah, I've made two versions of the Cotter's Low now and whilst I really like the bottoms of the swimsuit, I can't quite get on with the top. And the reason for that is that I think it's actually a little bit small and I still can't quite work out what I've done wrong with the sizing on this pattern. I've followed my own measurements and I've cut the right size for my body measurements as far as I could tell. But for some reason, still, the top feels quite tight and a little bit uncomfortable. Also, I used some quite rubbery swimwear elastic. Um, being a bit unfamiliar with swimwear elastic, I went for the rubbery kind. So you might be able to tell if I hold them like this. So the elastic in the waistband, and it's the same in the top actually, has gone slightly wavy. And I'm not sure if it's stretched out or if it's just not been inserted very well by me. <laughs> so what I found when I came to insert the elastic into the waistband was that I needed to cut a much longer length um, than was recommended to go around my tummy. <laughs> so this is what I mean really about um, the sizing of it all. It just didn't seem to work quite as it should with me. So in the end I cut a longer length of elastic. So really I've got too much elastic for my waistband and it's kind of bunching up a little bit. You can't actually tell when I'm wearing this because obviously when they're on they stretch out because um, swimwear is always quite tight to your body isn't it? Um, but I just feel as though I'm not 100% with these. I do like the bottoms of both pairs and I will 
definitely wear those but as I say I'm just not quite there with the top of this swimsuit yet so I think what I'll do if I make this again is either size up with the top and see if that helps or I might just borrow or buy another swimwear top pattern that I can use instead of the actual top that comes with the cottage low. So yeah, it's a bit of a journey, but I think swimwear probably always will be. It's definitely something that needs a lot of fitting, isn't it? And I think it's definitely something as well. You don't know how it's gonna work until you actually wear it. So in trying this on, I thought this was fine and it fit really nicely, but in actually wearing it, I didn't feel quite right in it. So I think these two swimwear sets are definitely also in my least favourite list, which is a shame, but nonetheless I'm really pleased that I did have a go at swimwear in 2022, and it's definitely something that I'm going to try to perfect in the future. Next on the list is um, something that I don't have the physical version of the pattern or garment for. So the pattern is the Mandy Boat Tee by Tassuti Patterns. I had a go at this pattern last year because I've seen so many really lovely versions of this around online, on Instagram, on YouTube. So I decided to have a go at it. It's a free pattern that can be downloaded from the Tasuti website. So all you need to do is actually sign up on their website and they will email you the pattern, which is great. And I really like the look of this pattern. So last year I decided to have a go at this and I actually do have um, a sew along video of me making this top so if you want to see more about the sewing process then I'll link that video down below. I made my one and only version in quite a thin viscose jersey which is actually a lovely fabric and I do like the stripes in it, I like the colours and everything um, but it was very thin and quite drapey and quite difficult to work with and I did struggle sewing it a little bit and I think I was having a bit of an off day when I came to make this top because I just felt as though I made quite a mess of it. <laughs> so yeah, the hems weren't very neat on it, it kind of stretched out. So it's quite a straight neckline, like a boat style neckline and it's just turned under and I felt as though that stretched out a little bit and yeah, just didn't make a very good job of it at all. So this one is definitely in my least favourite makes and when I came to look for the top today I couldn't actually find it and I think that's because I've already moved it into my box of things that I'm not quite sure what to do with. <laughs> I have a basket of things or clothes of things that I've made that I'm not necessarily wanting to wear that I put to one side to see if I can do anything else with because I don't like them all to be in my wardrobe. I don't have a lot of wardrobe space at all. So I don't like my wardrobe to be filled with things that I know I'm not gonna wear. So I tend to move them to one side um, and have them there for a bit to see if I'll do anything with them. And if I don't, then I will pass them on or try and recycle the fabric in some way. So the Mandy Boat Tee, I definitely still want to try this pattern again, because as I say, I've seen so many really nice versions of it. It did fit me okay and I felt okay in it and I feel as though I just need to try it again in a different fabric and make a better job of it and see how I get on with that. So that one is definitely my least favourite makes of last year. Next is something that I made last year but completely forgot or somehow overlooked to include in my list of makes from last year. I don't quite know why but when I went back through Instagram there was no picture of this dress on there for some reason so I think that's why I managed to miss it out. <laughs> anyway, it's this pattern which is New Look 6298. It's a very easy knit pattern and it's for a tunic dress. So this dress, you can make it in lots of different versions. You can make it with a V-neck, with a V-neck with pockets. Um, it has raglan sleeve seams. You can also make it with a round neck if you prefer, and you can make it either with long sleeves or with three quarter sleeves. And there are optional patch pockets as well. So yeah, a really nice sort of casual, relaxed tunic style dress. And it should be the exact kind of dress that I love to sew and love to wear. So I made version D. <laughs> last year which is the round neck raglan sleeved straight hem um, dress with no pockets or anything no fuss just a straight nice and easy raglan seamed tunic dress and this was how the dress turned out so in theory i actually really like this dress and i really like the pattern as well i don't use many big four pattern companies when it comes to my sewing i tend to go for indie patterns so it was really nice to try out a new look pattern and the instructions in that one were really good and really clear and i managed to follow them all fine um, so yeah this is my dress and how it turned out 
So the reason I'm including this in my least favourite makes is actually because of the fabric that I've used. So it's quite a bright floral fabric and um, if you know me, <laughs> you'll know that I tend to go for sort of ditzy floral colours and more sort of muted tone colours. So whenever I've come to wear this, I just feel a bit as though I'm not myself in it. I feel as though the colours are quite bright and um, yeah, it just doesn't feel quite right on me. So although there isn't anything wrong at all really with the pattern or the dress or even the fit, I just think it's that I've made a bit of an error in colour choice there. So I'm thinking that maybe if I don't wear this this year, I'll either think about cutting it into a top because I think maybe as a top, I'll just feel a little bit less loud in it. By the way, I do know that this isn't a very loud fabric at all. <laughs> I think it's just what you're used to, isn't it? And what you feel comfortable in. For me, it just feels a little bit different. Another thing that sort of bothers me a little bit is the length of the sleeves. So I really think I should have probably put a longer sleeve on it. I think that would have been less sort of irritating to me and it would have felt a little bit more, I don't know, I just would have felt a little bit better, I think. So anyway, that's that one. In terms of the pattern, it's a really good one for beginners. Lovely and easy with the raglan seams and everything. So really this one again was just me and my wrong colour choice. So yeah, this one had to be on the list as well. And then lastly, I had to include my two Billy dresses. So this one might come as a surprise to some of you <laughs> because I do love the Billy pattern, but there are some parts of it that I can't seem to get on with. So I made these two Billy dresses at the very beginning of last year, I think. In fact, there's some debate in my own head about whether I made these at the end of 21 or at the beginning of 2022. But for the sake of this video and for the sake of the fact that I've already included it in my makes from last year, I'm going to talk about them anyway. So yeah, at the beginning of last year, let's say, <laughs> I made two Billy sweatshirt dresses, just the plain version um, with the hem band and cuffs and neck band, no balloon sleeves or anything like that. I did need to shorten the pattern a fair bit by around 15 centimetres, I think, because this does come up quite long and more of a sort of dress rather than a tunic, but I prefer to wear tunic length if I'm going to be wearing things with leggings. And I made these two versions, a pink one and a grey cable knit one. So just in case you haven't seen the Billy pattern, I'm sure you have. <laughs> it's a really good pattern by Tilly the Button. So you can make a crew neck plain sweatshirt, you can make a balloon sleeved sweatshirt, a balloon sleeved dress, or just a plain sort of sweatshirt dress. And you can include pockets if you want to. I haven't included pockets in either of mine. So I have briefly mentioned about this one before. And this is still in my I'm not quite sure what to do with pile because I am not really quite sure what to do with it. <laughs> so this one's made from a cable knit jersey or a knit fabric and it's in this grey colour and I just don't feel as though this grey colour really suits me even though I do like grey. I just think it's not really quite the right grey for me so I never really reach for this one. So mainly that one's in my least favourite because of the colour. I also made this pink one and whilst I would say that I do like this version and I do wear it, I think other makes are actually overtaking this sweatshirt dress because I feel better in them. And as I've mentioned before, again, it's just the neckline for me on this one. So lots of people find this, that the Billy sweatshirt pattern just comes up a little bit high on the neck and it also tends to fall backwards as well. So I think I'm going to have to admit that if I want this pattern to work properly for me, I need to adjust the neckline and I think I need to do a forward shoulder adjustment to it as well. So if I make this sweater dress again, which I probably will because I do really like it and I like the concept of it and yeah, it's just the kind of thing, as I say, that I wear so much around the house. So I do really want to get this pattern right. Um, so yeah, those are the changes that I'm going to have to make to this pattern going forward if I want to make this one right for me. But as it is, even though I like the look of this one, it's funny how it works, isn't it? It's just something that I never really sort of gravitate towards and never particularly want to wear in the morning. Um, so there's obviously a reason for that and something that I need to sort out for next time. So yeah, that's that one, the Billy sweater dress. Those are my five least favourite makes from last year. I hope that was interesting. It was certainly interesting to me to go back and think about why I wasn't wearing things and what I could maybe do in the future if I want to revisit those patterns to make them more wearable to me. 
There's a couple of patterns in there, as I say, that I really do want to get right this year because I know that once I do get the fitting and things right, there'll be really good sort of workhorse patterns that I can just make time and time again. Any kind of tunic, sort of sweater, leggings -y dress is always a good one for me in my wardrobe. So yeah, I'd really like to get the Billy and the Jara sorted. And also I would really like to get a really good swimwear pattern figured out for myself so that I don't have to go through this whole, what am I gonna wear or what am I gonna buy <laughs> every time I go on holiday. I just need one pattern that's gonna fit me really well and that I'm gonna feel good and confident in, um, yeah, for swimwear. So a couple of things to think about for me going into this year. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'd love to know in the comments below any of your least favourite makes from last year and why. It would be really interesting to know. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you have enjoyed the video I'd love it if you gave it a like. That just helps me out here on YouTube. Take care and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!